Hi, welcome to my channel, The Overwhelmed Woman. I'm Emma Sewell Hunter and owner of Clutter to Clarity. I'm really nervous. This is my very first ever YouTube video. So I had a cup of tea. I've put a ton of makeup on. I've got my notes. I'm ready to go. But if you can help get this channel up and running by doing your stuff and subscribing to it, liking and sharing the hell out of it, I would be really grateful. Because if you are overwhelmed by life's stuff and you are drowning in emotional or physical clutter you are not alone and hopefully my little videos will help and resonate with you um, in terms of your physical clutter there's loads of videos out there that encourage you to get absolutely everything you own out of your cupboards and your wardrobes and tackle it that works but if you are overwhelmed, the chances are you haven't got the energy, the time, the motivation or perhaps even the space to make a start. So you are stuck before you even begin. And that is the aim of this video, just to give you some uh, some tips and some things to consider to get you off the ropes. I will be posting some more detailed videos on the things I'm going to talk about and other things over the coming weeks and months, including my own experience of leading a cluttered life, because I have committed every clutter crime that there is. I know how overwhelming it is and how it robs you of your time, your energy and your mental and physical well-being. But my story's for another day. It's all a bit deep and heavy and a little bit sad. Not the kind of stuff you want to post on your very first video. So I'll tell you about that another time. But for now, here are my top tips. So number one identify your groundhog day clutter zones so these are the areas or things in your home that are a constant source of frustration for you and you can't include your children or your spouses in this um, so are you always tripping over shoes when you walk in are you forever picking up coats or towels that have fallen from overladen coat hooks um, or war hooks? Do you have to fight to get into a room because you've got so much stuff stacked behind the doors? For me, one of my things used to be a big bookcase that was a permanent dumping ground for clutter and in the end I got so fed up with constantly clearing all the stuff off the shelves I just got rid of the bookcase completely. A bit, uh, uh, you know, extreme I don't mind saying but it forced me to tackle the clutter and declutter the books. It created a load of space and if you can identify and start tackling just one of those things that create stress for you every day, you will start to feel like you are winning in your in this journey of getting your clutter under control. So number two, get some easy wins under your belt. So take the emotion and the thought of how much something's cost out of this process for the time being and just think about the stuff that you can go around and remove from your home that you know you can live without. So if you've got any broken items, um, uh, duplicate items, games or toys that have got pieces missing from them, unwanted gifts or impulse purchases. If you can start putting those into categories to sell to throw away or to um, donate then that's brilliant but if you are overwhelmed especially if you don't know how to tackle your emotional expensive items or your unwanted gifts then put them in boxes and if it means revisiting them at a later date then so be it because the most important thing right now is for you to start seeing the wood from the trees and you can revisit that stuff a little bit further down the line okay number three be ruthless with your just in case clutter all those extra sets of bedding you've got for that time that someone might come and stay extra towels boxes of craft items wrapping paper stationery notepads and pens generally we've got way too much stuff like that and if you can start to reduce that down you'll free up much needed space for things that you need to get to all of the time Number four, declutter your beauty and personal products. So without looking at the stuff you use, 
Can you list every single item you use every day or regularly? Keep what you can and be brave, ditch what you can't. You've probably got way too much of it and most of it is probably even out of date or past its best. And if you have got any lightly used or new cosmetics or toiletries, there are wonderful charities out there like Give and Make Up that donate those and distribute them to victims of domestic abuse or women and children in crisis. Number five, go digital. So much music and so many films now can be streamed and downloaded. Do you actually need any DVDs or CDs that you might still have kicking about? Especially the CDs that you bought the whole album just for one track. We've all done that. So make yourself a playlist on Spotify, go old school and create yourself a CD compilation keep your absolute favorite dvds if you must but otherwise get rid now as far as your photographs your paper clutter your books and your emotional and sentimental items go i will make a video on that at a later date because it can be really time consuming and it can actually be really emotional but if you can make a start pulling those things out and culling them you will be going in the right direction Number six, make every item in your home earn its keep, especially if you are really stuck on space. So ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen if you got rid of that particular item right now? I'll give you an example. I used to own a beautiful collection of wine glasses. I loved them, but I hardly ever used them and they took up a load of space in my kitchen. I finally got rid of them a few years ago. Then last christmas i realized i needed four more wine glasses and was really cheesed off because i'd let go of my wine glasses but you know what i went to a charity shop i got four more wine glasses for one pound i used them throughout christmas then i donated them back to the charity shop the point of all this i didn't really miss my beautiful collection of wine glasses and um I was able to get some really inexpensively when I needed them and I didn't have to spend 360 days of the year losing all that much needed space by storing those glasses for perhaps the four or five days that I might actually need them. Number seven, take stock of your storage and this is a biggie because as a nation we spend a fortune on storage solutions. We put all our stuff in beautiful storage boxes and gorgeous beautiful cabinets but what happens invariably is our stuff starts to overflow, we never tackle it anyway, we just hide it and then we go out and spend more money on more storage. So unless you live in what I call a Pinterest home, stop using storage as the solution and just tackle the stuff before your storage solutions become part of your cluttered life too. And while I'm on the subject of stuff, clutter is anything that doesn't get used, doesn't have a space, is too big for the space it's in or is disorganised and untidy. So that is irrelevant of how pretty something is, um, how expensive it is or um, what its sentimental value is. It potentially is still clutter. Number eight, eliminate to accumulate. If you can sell some of your stuff, honestly, do it. I will post a video on this though because selling your stuff can be really daunting and really time consuming. People make it sound like, yeah, just sell your stuff, but honestly, it can be a real headache. But in 2018, I did sell a load of stuff, including my sentimental and emotional clutter and my beautiful wine glasses. And I made enough money to take my family to Euro Disney for five days and stay in an amazing resort. I've never missed the stuff I sold and instead I've got wonderful memories. But here's the thing. If you are overwhelmed by the sheer amount of stuff that you potentially want to sell, then you might have to make a call to let some of it or all of it go. 
because if your house resembles a scene from Only Fools and Horses and you've got clothes piled on the back of every door and boxes to the rafters of stuff you want to sell, that is just going to be counterproductive and it is going to leave you feeling soul destroyed all the time. So you might need to just let it go. Number nine, be clear about your choices. So this, there's no grey area here. Do you want the stuff or do you want the space? And that can apply to the little things or the big things. So we recently moved. I own a beautiful Art Deco cabinet and we decided to give our daughter the bigger of the three bedrooms because she will need the space more than we do. I now can't fit my beautiful cabinet into my room. So I need to make a call on what to do with it because I know that if I try to shoehorn it into any other area within the home that I am going to lose much needed space and I'm going to feel like the walls are closing in on me and that is not conducive to getting your mental and physical well-being under control. So sometimes you just have to make the call on what you want. And number 10, and this is the real big meaningful question, is, is the clutter you own worth the time and energy that you are wasting on it? So do you want a clutter-free life where your home's really easy and quick to clean and take care of? Do you want more time to spend on yourself? I know, like who actually does that? Um, crazy talk or more time with your family, or on your hobbies, or even some downtime? Are you actually perhaps even using clutter as a reason to avoid living in the real world? I mean, that's a question for another day, but that's something you might need to ask yourself. Because I'm telling you now, once you start tackling your clutter, life really does open up for you, and you will never look back. So, that brings me to the end of this video, it's only taken 42 attempts and a lot of swearing. I'm not even joking, that's true. This rubbish about, yeah, just make a YouTube video, it's really easy. No, it isn't. But I really hope that my tips have helped you. And uh, from one overwhelmed woman, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'd love to hear your comments, but please be kind because no one likes a spiteful, horrible person, do they? So don't be um, but I hope they've helped and until next time I really hope that you can go from clutter to clarity. Massive love, now I am going to make a cup of tea.